Well, hello people, and welcome back to part 28 of the Build Guide 2. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Uh, welcome back everyone, welcome back to Orchid Bay. What a wonderful city, right? Thanks for all supporting the Road Network frame, you guys really enjoyed this, and indeed we are going to be uh, constructing the first half of the skyline today, but before we talk about that, we do have uh, some renaming to do. So last episode, I asked you guys for some airport names, and EB got the conversation flowing, and then Future Fox came in with Orchid Bay, <laughs> which is just hilarious, right? That's exactly my sense of humour. So now we have Orchid Bay Regional Airport, and then we also asked for a name for our baseball people over this way, and this is going to be uh, the Bagels Stadium, okay? I guess we should go for the colour of a bagel, I suppose. What colour are bagels? I guess they're beige, right? It's kind of hard to get beige, isn't it? But that, that'll do. Cool. So really happy, right? So welcome back everyone. It is, of course, now the downtown project in Orchid Bay. One of the best things to build in the city skyline, certainly one of my favourites to do. And traditionally, as we built our skylines over Palavan and Novaria, New York and Ilos, the skyline has kind of been its own episode, right, where the towers sit. But with Orchid Bay, we're playing quite modular. So if we take a look across the other side of the river here, you know, we had the legal square and district with its associate in suburbia. Then we did the sort of Asia town inspired build and then the fishing in the green cities and sports parks. So it's all very modular and we're kind of filling a much bigger space here, so we're essentially going to start building a modular skyline today. So let me kind of walk you through exactly what I think is going to happen with Orchid Bay. So we're going to be working on the first third of it today, which is going to take us from this area here, um, up to the Couplet Road, down towards the ferry terminal, and then back down to the riverfront. And this is very much going to be kind of commercial, residential, and tourism focused. This central bit around the stadium and the transport hub and the riverfront down this way, is going to essentially become our skyline peak, right? The financial district where all our mega towers are sat. And then over towards the left. I haven't quite decided yet. Let me know what sort of theme this part of the skyline should take. Perhaps more of a legal district, maybe. Now get some ideas down in the comments. So it's essentially going to be kind of a three-part skyline. And then we're also going to do the riverfront park um, as an episode as well. So it should allow us to add much more customization um, into Orchid Bay's eventual downtown structure. But let's get started with this little commercial bit on the park front, shall we? Should be a lot of fun today. Start building downtown Orchid Bay. So we're going to start out by painting out a little district here against our park area. And this is going to be named after one of our wonderful Patreon subscribers, uh, Rob Best. And this is going to be the best for business front over this way. And we're actually going to make this um, the modern city centre, which is going to be a high density commercial specialisation. Again, if you are missing that park, it is a really nice one. You get some really cute commercial assets with it. Uh, you can find it linked down in Instant Gaming below. So, we're going to start contributing to an eventual crawling height here, right? So, previous episodes of Orchid Bay, we've been working with, you know, what I've been referring to as medium density, essentially from this point. So, it's at this point now we're moving into high density. So, we need to start using bigger buildings and taller buildings as well. So, let's start factoring that in. So, we'll kind of start from right to left shall we so let's remove some of these frames now i've got some ideas of what i want to sit here let's come into our content creator tab filter for modern japan and i think i'm going to have these two shopping centers here so you've got the station department store and then the rail yard shopping center so these are going to fit really nicely up against here i think and i actually wonder if i want to put kind of a smaller tower here as well to look over the stadium how about the marble building Again, Skyscrapers Content Creator Pack, if you're missing it, links down below. Definitely one of the best ones to get, I think, for vanilla. You get such a wonderful collection of much more realistic towers. And that's not going to be too bad, okay? Of course, our super towers are going to be just across the stadium there. But uh, these guys inside the football stadium, which has finally been restored after last episode's Inferno, uh, should just get a really nice view. And of course, if you're working in there, you actually get to watch the match for free, which is handy, isn't it? Cool. So we'll have that on there. That's not going to be too bad be happy with that. Now let's come back into our modern Japan stuff and then we're going to grab the rail yard shopping center that's going to sit there and then the station department store will hopefully uh, sit here Again, I think I can afford to lose that connection. I think we probably can or again we could actually put this one here and then what we will do is now begin to introduce that uh, specialization for high density commercial over this way which should be quite fun. 
Now, I don't want it everywhere, so we'll just sort of see what comes in. And probably a little bit on the corner over this way also. Cool, so now let's analyze. Of course, when we're building the skyline, I always champion looking at builds from different angles. It's probably the most important to do that during the downtown episodes, I think. One of those builds that can get very ugly very quickly. But I'm going to enjoy some modern city center over this way. Let some of these level up as well. They're a little bit kind of Parisian looking at the lower levels, which isn't a bad thing, but definitely a theme that I'm not particularly looking to instigate here. So let's keep this commercial demand coming in. And we'll keep it around the back as well, I think. And then hopefully this is going to start growing up now as well. We'll wait for that one to come in just so we get those perfect four units in. Cool. Now I'm looking at it as well. I think I'd also like to upgrade uh, this park path here. Uh, into an amusement park pathway because the stadium is red. I think it would definitely be appropriate to theme sort of the pathway out the like it's a famous walk for the fans or something up to the uh, Orchid United Stadium. That'd be pretty nice. Cool, there we go. So this is all starting to come together now, isn't it? So while this is growing, uh, let's have a little talk about what else is going to happen over this way. Uh, so we're going to need to paint out another district because in this area here, I actually want um, Green City's residential we do have some more population milestones to hit and within that time frame uh, we do actually need to get quite a bit of population what is it now till the next milestone yeah 20,000 <laughs> 20,000 until we hit the next one so fair distance to go with the current pace we expand at right we're also going to call this Schroeder Heights after another one of our wonderful patrons Mike Schroeder thank you for your support Mike real secret blend of herbs and spices mate appreciate the support yeah happy with these so far though very nice it is growing and then within this district here, I'd like to specialize this to become green cities. I'm going with green cities because I need the height here in order to help form the skyline. And the green cities residentials are the tallest residentials in the game. So we want to make sure that we are respecting them. So we're doing this initial frame last episode, but I think I'd like to make this kind of a desirable development. And to help reinforce that vibe, I think we're actually going to run with some small pedestrian road in order to bring that vibe home hopefully so let's just rework some of these grids so we're not all so well not quite as shattered and hopefully you're going to come down here without too much trouble yep yeah, that's going to be fine and then let's grab some pedestrian road so if we're going to go quite fancy imagine these would be extremely expensive places to live uh, what are we at here 1280 um how many tiles is that so that whole distance is 32 tiles so let's come down to about 19 should give us a decent enough halfway point and uh, we'll feed that through onto the arterial road but we definitely want to remove the traffic lights from that and um, otherwise it's just going to cause chaos and there's gonna be no cars leaving out so it's pretty all right to have that there i think so we'll check on these guys you guys all right mm, yeah see these are the prison looking ones which i don't i don't mind these definitely have a place but just not here i don't think we'll see what happens with them but we're starting to generate that crawl now, aren't we? Cool. So we'll definitely let the pedestrian road here take all the zoning. So let's see if we can have another one up here. That's going to give me a little pathway in between. Could also have another connection there, but it's probably not ideal. Let's actually go for that one, I think. And then we'll also do the same thing here. So really, again, looking to maximize those zonable squares that we get over this side. And I think we could also probably afford... Um, a similar vibe by actually using the fence trick to reset the zone into the other road over that way. So let's see if we can do that just like so. That gives us a three deep section there. And then we'll also have that happen again on this side. Cool. And that's going to reset some of my zoning to look like so. And now we can basically just fill this in. So green cities, are actually I'm looking to not mass zone here. I don't want endless amounts of it. Uh, we are using pedestrian roads, so of course we are going to need that service point. Let's go ahead and see if we can factor this into the build somewhere. Almost like a sort of communal bin area is the service point over this way, isn't it, I guess? It'd be really cool if we could position this at the bottom of the highway. I think we can do that, so it's like the bins for the apartments over this way, kind of beneath the freeway here. I think that'd be pretty cool. So let's see if we can do that. Will you position? Oh no, I don't want pedestrian road. My apologies. Just regular road is fine. Thank you. 
And then, perfect. That's amazing. That's going to be great, isn't it? That's going to sit wonderfully well there. Uh, and then we will paint this pedestrian area uh, out just over this way. So these towers are going to take a little bit to come to full size, but they will get there eventually. Services and whatnot will help them once they come in. So I think now the more I'm seeing this horse chestnut tree, the less I'm liking it <laughs> on the road. Uh, can we go for an eastern cottonwood here? I'm not sure if I do want a tree lined road here. Maybe I just want a... How about something small? Does a wild hedge look ridiculous? How about some of these new colourful ones? New colourful ones could be fun, actually. I think it allows the towers to speak more for themselves, doesn't it, when the tree isn't dominating them. And then we'll have perhaps a fancier tree through the middle of the pedestrian area there. With the um, California palm. Even a crawl of height in the palms. <laughs> this is very much appreciated, isn't it? Yes, please, everyone. Wonderful. Cool. So these are growing up now. Let's keep that commercial demand coming in. And keep enjoying a lot of this modern city centre. So we're losing a zoning square there. That's fine. Uh, we can shift down to three. No problem at all. And now I'm seeing it. I actually think maybe just moving the shopping centre over by a tile. Is what I want to do. Or I can just place it exactly where we already had it. And um, just because we've got this sort of fire escape looking thing on the side of the building. And I think that would be nice to factor in. Uh, to the build with a pathway and then we can also kind of use that as an excuse to give a bit of a plaza border around one of these larger towers which always helps I think yeah so I think that helps right just the extra tile will go a long way for bringing in some different features but so far there we go those Parisian ones are starting to go away now these ones are really cute I love these big sort of flat glass shop fronts it's very downtown isn't it Oh, see, that is a nice one there on the corner with the little alcove. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of that. Really is a good one. Um, modern city centre, if you don't have it already. One of my favourite commercial ones. Definitely makes high-density commercial a lot more uh, tolerable, I think. Yeah, we've got, that's a really nice pattern now, isn't it? We've got all those little verandas there. Someone's sunbathing. Well, what a view to sunbathe from as well, right? <laughs> what, a, what a position for a sun lounger. Uh, so these guys... That just despawned for some reason. Are you okay? Are you okay, Mr. Green Cities, man? Let's hope so. Yeah, so these guys are just going to take a little while to grow and come to fruition for the size that we want them to be. So we're just going to have to bear with that, and that will happen over the course of the episode. And again, I probably want a little bit more pedestrian road over this way. Let's see what our grid structure takes the form of if we run it. And then can we then have this run parallel with that main arterial? Up to there. And then actually hook into this way. And that'll keep everyone connected. And again, we'll do the zoning trick to just reset some of our zonings if we need them. But this is what I'm looking for, right? Big four deeps, three deeps are fine as well. Because I'm going to want that height as part of the skyline. Which hopefully now as we sort of sit back here and chill, we can see developing. Okay, but... They're going to get much taller. We've just got to wait. Wonderful. So let's now return to the road network. It looks like this one would possibly want to now align with its friend on this side. Which absolutely does. Let's actually reset the zone in there first of all. So we can get more of that deep zoning in. So would another tower actually be out of the question here? Let's return to the skyscraper uniques. And let's have a little look what's available. So ideally, I want something smaller than the marble centre. Are you smaller? One Galveston? Basically the same height, aren't you? I think this one might do a good job for us. The Olympia term. Have a little look what's happening here. Yeah, I think I can enjoy that as part of the ever-growing skyline here as we move into downtown. God, I just love Orchid Bay. <laughs> it's, uh, just, I, I can't quite put my finger on why I'm enjoying this city so much. I think it's because we're just taking our time, you know, and it's... Just slow and the details are really paying off across the whole cityscape now, isn't it? Really enjoyable to play everyone. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to be happy with this one. But I'd like to give it again a little bit of a uh, plaza design, if at all possible. So what we will do is actually delete it for right now. And then I'd like to upgrade this one here into a four-lane road. Which is going to widen it ever so slightly. And then I want to place it on the road and then downgrade it back into my two-unit road, which will 
give that little bit of a gap between uh, the plaza or well, the road and the tower, right? Uh, and then hopefully we're going to have enough room either side to place some of our favourite plazas in. Which ones do we want to go for? Do we want plazas, plazas here? I think small fountain plaza is going to do a, a nice job, isn't it? Just thinking, do we want to have a little path boundary around the bottom of the tower as well? That might actually give it more purpose. Let's just have a little experiment with that. Cool. Then we can downgrade back into single road, which is tremendous. You can also do this with two unit gap as well and have like a metro station in front of it, which is really cool. Uh, then let's place the plaza that side. And then I want to kind of use the pathways now to accentuate the plaza design around the foot of the tower. If that is going to be acceptable. That just wants to move across a tiny bit, doesn't it? It's really annoying that these snap because the, the part life ones don't snap and you can just align them a little bit further. How does the plot the part life ones look here actually? Do you prefer that against the plazas and promenades fountain? I think I actually kind of prefer the part life plaza, you know. I think the sugar maples are a little bit more tasteful against the foot of the tower, aren't they? I think we'll go with that one then. Get rid of that. So we'll run with part life plazas and then we can run these pathways to wherever we want to. Make sure everyone's nice and walkable. And then we'll bring this road out now so it can hold uh, its final plaza. Let's go for... Just bring this down as far as we can for right now. And then we want to make sure we're saving that five tile gap. Or oh, four tiles here, isn't it? Because we already have that pathway in. Uh, and then we'll bring the pathway down this way. It's always really fun doing this kind of... Figuring out ways to do these little sort of expanded plaza spaces at the foot of the new skyscraper stuff. At least it is for me anyway, it's a lot of fun. Cool. And then we want to line that up basically within the middle. Something like that. Cool. Then we can trim off that one. And then we can now bring that down and continue to zone around here if we want, but we're not quite sure exactly what's happening there yet. Make sure we get that hooked in as well. Cool. So don't hate that for right now, I don't think. There's definitely more opportunities for zoning to take place around here, which I think we will do. Let's go ahead and get more commercial in and around this space. And then we can probably do some sort of flower design here in our detail in time to help complement uh, the plaza at the foot of the tower again as well. I think I would like some green spaces within the um, sort of shopping district as well. So let's see if we come into the grid. And I feel like it would be pavement road here, wouldn't it? Why don't we grab some just vanilla concrete path? And then we'll meander this around into different spaces and then we can do some trees and benches around here. Maybe a little bit of fencing would be appreciated as well against the main road. Uh, just to help complement it, I think. But now we should beginning to see this little part of the residential and commercial skyline developing. These are obviously going to get significantly taller as the episode goes on, which is going to be nice. How are we feeling about this commercial around the bottom of the tower? Yeah, see, that's perfect, right? That's perfect asset generation there. Let's make that historical. I don't want to lose those tiles with the props at the back for the pathway. That's going to be really nice. Yeah, see, that's that's an issue, isn't it? <laughs> we don't want that, that flat shop face there either. We'll hopefully be able to resolve that as it levels up. But really liking the way this is looking. Big fan of this stuff here. Uh, we'll make historical as well as I see fit for the ones that I do like. Make sure that we don't lose them. There's not any really horrible assets in this pack anyway. For the uh, modern city centre stuff. Cool, but this is growing up now. I'm happy with the way it's starting to shape up. It, of course, wants a little bit of refinement and plenty of detail in during the time lapse. But for right now, it's going to do a job for me. Uh, what I'd now like to explore is the possibility of a tourism waterfront that's going to sit against the couplet road and also a unique building in here as well. As to be said, thoroughly enjoying <laughs> the new Skyline additions from here. They got a real nice swoop there with those two towers and of course those green cities are going to keep going up and up and up. Oh, now I'm going to turn to the couplet system. So we are going to have a little bit of commercial uh, sat around here so let's go ahead and paint out another district. We're just going to name this after all our wonderful Patreon subscribers. We're going to go for Becky Bars along the front here. Thanks for always support Becky. Really appreciate it. So we're going to specialise this one into tourism. 
So I'm not usually an enormous lover of some of the tourism towers, but they are going to be welcome in Orchid Bay. But first of all, let's just get a big deep zoning here because we're going to be using quite a few different tourism assets today. And I'd also like to see if we can bring out a road here, maybe from this one. I want to have some of these hotels run back to back. Again, because I'm really looking to create the height here. And then we'll have... I do want to save a little bit of room for some fencing between this train line here. A little bit of overgrowth too. As the transport network comes through the city. And that gives me, what, three deep tiles there. Okay, we'll, we'll see how that grows up. See how it behaves. So we'll have a lot of hotels here, right, looking out. Over our ocean front, kind of a little bit of a kind of Miami vibe here, I suppose, right? Lots of tall hotel towers right near the water. One place to come and stay, and again, it's going to be contributing to that skyline. And there's an asset I've been waiting to use for quite a while now, and this is going to be one from the heart of Korea. And this is going to be this little number, the um, apartment complex. And I think I want to put this right on the corner there. It's very blue. <laughs> it's a very blue building, isn't it? Right? But uh, it's kind of nice. I do like it. When I first saw this, when the Hearts of Creed came out, I was like, I don't know where I'm ever going to put that. But looking out over the waterfront park here, which will eventually exist, it's just kind of perfect. It's going to sit really nicely up against the couplet system. Just a fan of it. Just really like it. I think once all these towers grow in as well. Uh, with some cute little uh, designs at the front. I love that little uh, fountain there. Some nice little bars popping up here as well for Becky's Barfront Hotels. The Royal Douche over this, <laughs> over this way as well. And then some nice little ones that we don't usually see. We very rarely use these assets on the channel. And even when we do, they're usually plopped with Rico in a modded build. Yeah, but this is the sort of stuff, right? So people sat on these balconies, if we can try and replicate the view from the balcony. There you go. It's pretty cute, right? Not too bad. I think I'm going to enjoy that. Yeah, so, of course, we'll be careful of extreme asset repetition. It's not something we really want, but we'll see what we can do. And then let's get some more commercial knocking about in here as well, right? I want more of those towers. And then we'll hopefully return to foot of our park now to see Orchid Bay's skyline or downtown slowly growing up which is just the most amount of fun look at that love of those two towers there from the apartment complex they're a great addition aren't they love those so we can see that crawl now beginning to develop green cities is starting to come to fruition those hotels over there are really helping as well cool so we're now seeing that transition from medium to high density start to come together. Hopefully now you can see the benefit of last episode, right? Having all these frames and public transport networks already here for when you start building such a massive help. Noise pollution. Is that because you're too close to the uh, thing here? It is, isn't it? Uh, do I want to delete these? I don't know how I feel about these ones here. I feel like they're kind of a bit awkward. Maybe some low density commercial instead in place of those, just to reduce the noise pollution a little bit. And um, we can also actually, just speaking of reducing noise pollution, we've got the room for a couple of trees here. Which definitely would help just dampen it. I mean, they've already stopped complaining, so it's not a major source of pollution, is it? But that tree line will certainly help. We'll see what low-density commercial looks like. You know, there are some small shops in a downtown, I guess it's not all massive buildings. But we'll obviously have to be very careful with what's allowed to come in. So how does an ice cream parlor sit up against one of those big units? Two ice cream parlors. <laughs> what are the chances of that? I mean, I suppose I don't mind that. I don't mind it. We're definitely gonna, let's make one of them historical. Um, let's do the first one. We'll let that one level up. Hopefully it'll get a little bit taller. Uh, I, you, I actually wouldn't mind one of the horrible looking commercial assets coming in here, the big tall ones, because it would actually help the skyline a little bit. Cool, but well, that's not bad. I'm happy with that one. And again, our towers here, so we're getting quite a lot of these thin little grey numbers, aren't we? Which isn't horrific, I don't think. I think I can bear with them. They're kind of different heights, which is helping differentiate them a little bit. All those people walking over as well. 
Let's please everyone. Look at that. How many people are actually using this metro now? The underground metro is not really that busy. Now, it does help someone point out um, that we do actually have an opportunity to connect in with the underground network over by the mall. Which I guess we could do that here. I mean, they do kind of connect at this joint station anyway. Then what we will do eventually is bring this metro line across this way and then hook it in with a station here with another convergence point. I think it'd be a bit overkill to hook it in again. So that'll probably be part of a future expansion. Uh, and then we also had someone asking me to check if I added in uh, the return stop on this one. Yeah, there we go, let's move the stop over that way. And the stop there, yes I did forget to add that stop, thank you very much for pointing that out, very much appreciated. Uh, let's have a look how this line is doing. Yeah, it's not too bad. And the metro, do we need to start adding more vehicles or higher capacity at all yet? No, everyone's okay. That's all growing up. Cool, so let's have a turn to some new unique buildings. I'd like to kind of reinforce the tourism vibe here. I think the music club uh, will do uh, a wonderful job for us. So let's see if we can probably knock this road out now. We probably don't need it, do we? And then can we just have the music club there? Set up against our road. A bit of nightlife won't be a mess here, I don't think, will it? Um, well, I guess that's we could just create a little separate mini a district around this one, because again, we're kind of transitioning from nothing here, so why don't we go for some clubs around the bottom of the music club and around the rail? That might be uh, quite nice. A little bit of a seedy part of town, right? Where the undesirables of Orchid Bay live. Or party, at least, they don't live here. Uh, and then we'll give this uh, the nightlife commercial specialization. Again, both of these leisure and nightlife specializations come from the After Dark DLC, if you're wondering. Cool. And again, I think the little fence trick there, just to throw the zone in uh, up to a point where I need it, would help. Cool. And I guess we can actually use that fence as an excuse to actually dirty up the commercial a little bit with its theme. Let's go ahead and get some oil fencing on there. Uh, the fence police will... Can they, can they see this from the tower? Where are the fence police based? Uh, fence police are there, aren't they? Yes, this is directly in, light, in line of sight of the fence police. <laughs> so they can see us here. Yes, we'll have, to, we'll have to correct that. They will be sending me reports otherwise. So let's do it from left to right instead. There we go. Cool. So yeah, I think some clubs next to the actual music club asset itself is going to be welcome. Right, so we'll wait and see what comes in here. Again, I think we can actually probably afford another little road to just pop out behind the music club and actually have some uh, clubs looking directly out over the rail, which will give us some nice network and transport detail, and I think. So we can probably enjoy that. And then let's make sure we keep that fence going. What's the wrong orientation again, isn't it? Pain in the ass. <laughs> I really wish you could just upgrade it and flip the direction around. There we go. And then we'll have that one run up there. Cool. And then I'll probably a little bit of uh, overgrowth between all of that. A sensible size one at least. We'll go a long way to kind of introducing that overgrown sort of rail line here. And obviously you imagine the Rail lines here are never maintained. If anyone's ever been into a train, or uh, well, on a train coming into London Euston, um, you'll kind of look out your window and just see a lot of this kind of overgrown part of London that is never maintained and no one ever goes down there, of course, because it's a, a train line. So we want that sort of vibe to come through here. I think maybe the occasional sort of larger tree threatening to break through and um, probably some larger vanilla bush would also be... Uh, welcome in here uh, as well. Cool. Yeah, there you go. Like the 5am bar right by the tracks. The cretins of Orchid Bay having the time of their lives out here. Cool. Love that little monorail hump bridge. <laughs> that turned out really nicely. Just a shame it's not getting used because that bloody harbour's bugged. But one day it'll work. 
then we can probably do more CD Nightlife um, over this way as well. Actually, this might be a good point for a bit of service industry, actually. Um, goodness gracious me. Illegal. Get out. Disgusting. Surviving Mars assets. Uh, right, so let's just re-look at the rail, because that's a little bit bendy, isn't it? So let's grab that monorail again. You're going to come out snapped on an angle, and you're going to come across the road. And then a road guide land and a free phone tool should see everyone home safe and tucked up in bed. Fantastic. Uh, so yeah, I think a little bit of um, police station vibes here might be quite welcome. So let's see if we can go for this going to let me place in a car park, which is what I want. So let's go for our new car park. Someone in there. Also forgetting we can kind of have the multi-story unit now decorate our skyline, can't we? With the new parking options we've got available. Might be worth it, especially the shopping districts over this way. We'll see. Uh, yes, so police station. Let's give them uh, a significant building. Police headquarters is probably the most appropriate. Don't really want the high capacity on here, really. Uh, okay, and then we'll run that up and alongside. And more overgrowth opportunities there. And then we'll have our police headquarters face out across the rail line, I think. Cool. I should see everyone through. Uh, we have placed quite a few unique buildings today. So let's just adjust the budget for unique buildings because it's going to absolutely start wrecking Orchid Bay's economy if we don't keep an eye on that. Kind of a downside to the vanilla game now is that all these new buildings are all uniques. They don't work as office spaces, which of course is what they would be in real life. Cool, but again, I'm happy with this now. We're starting to get that real thick density packed in, aren't we, you know? And once the towers behind it come in, it's only going to help that crawl up. So that's what we want. You know, we want height and density when we start moving into high density. So there's a little thing I've just sort of had pop into my head here as I'm just sort of analysing things. And I'm going to try it just to be somewhat bold. I'm going to bring out this road here without it snapping into the road as close as I can get it. And what happens if we stick some industry here? I'm kind of looking for warehouses and industrial props, just to hammer home the kind of seedy vibe that's developing around Becky Bars. Not that I'm trying to insinuate Becky's a seedy person, not at all, please don't think that, but it's just... Just a vibe, isn't it? <laughs> As always. Just a vibe. So, we've got a little bit of industry demand, we'll see if that grows in. And see if it actually works, anyway. But, uh... It's coming together, isn't it? It's coming together, and it feels like a fun place for a detailing time lapse. Um, we're going to go ahead now and fill in all these spaces with landscaping and designs. Bring the fence pattern and the tree pattern around the bottom of our green cities district, and basically just wait for them to level up. Um, and hopefully we'll get some of those super tall ones in. I think there's a level 5 green cities tower that's like super, super tall. So we'll definitely want some of these over this way. Yeah, let's landscape it all up over lots of fencing and trees. Um, also details some kind of park and rec areas as well for the people living in these what is essentially kind of a closed gated community within the downtown with all these towers isn't it? I uh, respect that. Uh, I'm not going to do too much to this big park space out the front. Um, I kind of want it just to be open lawn and let them run up to all these commercial units. Oh, look at those towers. <laughs> that's, like, that's like my new favourite asset, those new apartment complexes. Really good. Again, Hearts of Korea if you're missing that. Yeah, I don't want anything really in this lawn space. Um, I don't want it to detract from the front uh, of the building. Although there was one thing I wanted to try. Uh, let's search for art museum. Yeah, this one here. I was thinking maybe having this here, but now I think I'm developing the waterfront park. I think this would probably work better out here. We've also got a really good idea for a building we're going to place in the park as well, so... That'll be next episode as we come to work on the financial district. Yeah, big major tower centre for Orchid Bay. But either way, let's detail up today's editions and tie it all together and get lots of walkability and detailing. And then we'll be right back.
let's have a detailing review, shall we? So there's a fair bit to cover here, so settle in and get comfy. And I thought we'd start the review from the top of Mad Mountain, actually, just now so we can kind of get a grander impression of that initial transition to high density now, right? We're seeing much more densely packed buildings, the towers are getting bigger, and hopefully now you can begin to envision what part two of Orchid Bay Skyline will be once those super talls start to come in as part of our financial district build, which will come next episode. But either way, let's fly across uh, the islands. So over at our couplet road now, the cycle highway has extended back onto the road as per it was over this way, over this way, uh, right here. I would have liked to keep it elevated, but the ferry terminal is in the way, and I guess we'll put it back on the road until it reaches the park. Uh, and done something quite cool here. Uh, so we've got buses coming down this way, but they don't come down this road because they're actually pulling into the harbour uh, to stop at the harbour. So now we have this like red and green uh, contrast either side of the couplet road, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so super happy to have, the, have that functioning and actually make sense as well. Uh, more pathways here, and now our tourism and nightlife district, uh, Becky Bars, uh, right up against our waterfront, uh, is also complete with lots of overgrowth around our rail network couple of office assets and indeed some kind of grotty looking commercial sat under the metro line here. Again, not a particularly nice sort of karaoke bar to come to. And with all the public transport lines flowing through it as well. And I hope now, especially I mentioned it earlier too, you can see how important it was to lay out all that road frame and public transport networks beforehand. It makes building in vanilla um, significantly easier. So I hope it's coming helpful at least. Anyway, lots of tourism, a bush lined pathway here to just snake through, which is actually getting used people moving back and forth. Uh, dropped in some parking and actually ended up moving the Korean apartment complexes over a little bit uh, to drop in one of the shopping center uniques which now sits here and has a great sight line down to the uh, gradient and fence please headquarters uh, over there and this comes down and this isn't too much developed this side because this will be kind of part of our downtown oceanfront park build that will fill this space up until the roundabout interchange uh, so don't worry too much about this, but also throwing in another one of the skyscraper towers, nothing too tall. Again, I want the main height to really be localised around this area next episode. So this will, of course, develop, but there has been some changes. There's now also some parking and office space nearby to the monorail, where we've got some nice assets coming in uh, with some careful parking too. And there's a great little sight line uh, down here. As we come this way, we've got this little commercial unit. Uh, this has all been fenced off and overgrown under the kind of overpass and public transport networks. Uh, and then we do have a little wine and liquor store kind of sat basically under the freeway here, which is a really cool aesthetic, right, with all the towers surrounding it. Great little asset. And then boxed off all the areas here, overgrown them. Uh, and now our Green Cities area is also a bit more car parking with a little office asset just opposite the tram depot as well. Perhaps a little bit of tram admin or tram HR, you know, if the one tram has an issue with another tram, then they can indeed file a complaint at the HR department in the office just across the street. Uh, and then, oh, look at that. <laughs> the train going past. So much fun. I'm really enjoying this like modular skyline approach. First time we've really tried it, but um, just hope you appreciate that, right? <laughs> just, this is it for me. This is the best bit. Just all this public transport moving back and forth now and it's all busy. Uh, super great. Let's have a little look at our green cities district from a couple of angles. So now we're seeing... Uh, that big dense tower begin to climb and there's a great little sight line here actually I kind of stumbled across uh, during some of the detail and I think it's this little view right here uh, from this balcony if we can line it up correctly there we go that's about it right just what a cool view these guys have from the balcony here looking into that initial uh, high density climb super interesting <laughs> absolutely love it uh, let's have a look down the arterial I know people aren't always interested in the traffic um, and yeah, they do kind of stop at the lights and a bit backs up, but I love that aesthetic, you know, it's a It's a busy downtown district, you know, where we're getting busy now the roads so are there is a little bit of traffic So I love to see that and super busy cycle highways as well uh, And we've also extended the white bus line Through the downtown now so it actually runs back through the stadium stops here with all the trams And then joins the bus hierarchy system back on the waterfront as well So that's all really nice uh, done some little sort of park detailing in and around the bottom of the green city's tower so people that live here can maybe come out and sit in the sun if they need to. And again, all this sort of corner asset and specific asset choice really paying off now. Multiple sight lines around here are just looking absolutely fantastic. Just so happy with it. <laughs> really nice. 
uh, done a little kind of fence garden here with some trees using the new content creator ones and a sugar maple. And then we do have more uh, mid-century modern, no, uh, modern city centre, sorry. I always get those two packs confused <laughs> uh, to start that climb up to that first tower, uh, which now sits over here. Uh, this low density commercial actually ended up settling in quite nicely. Big fan of the ice cream power next to one of these assets that came in. And then we pop back up to the high density commercial over here before enjoying some more bush line gardens in and around the foot of the plaza uh, around the tower, which has just came out really nicely. And chucked in one of the bobab trees, so these called one of the African ones. Um, might be a little out of place, but maybe it was relocated here as part of some sort of program or maybe an ancient tree that's just remained. I don't know, justification, but I wanted to use it, so there it is. Uh, and then this whole commercial front now up against the park space. Really happy to leave just open lawn um, in the run up to the towers here and just look at that. <laughs> really, really happy with it. It makes me so happy. I love building downtowns and like road network frames. This is like easily one of my favorite things in the game to do. Um, so yeah, uh, Modern City Center commercial really helping complement the high density vibes. And then there's also another connection onto uh, the Red uh, Orchid United uh, walkway here, which is pretty cool. Uh, really happy with this now. And that, of course, hooks back into the station over there as well. And I'll kind of make a point here of trying to show off some different angles of our initial start to high density. And you can imagine how much taller this is going to grow. Uh, should we just have a little sample spice? So we can kind of see exactly how tall we're going to get. So I know that this building right here, the Six Rivers Center... Um, is going to be the peak of the skyline. Nothing will be taller than that building. So we can see the crawl from high density into super talls. That will continue to grow and just look fantastic, we hope, right? <laughs> really, really itching to record that next episode already. So I hope you're all looking forward to it as much as I am. But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for part one of Orchid Base Skyline and our transition into what I'm now considering high density. And I hope you've kind of seen that transition come into play from medium to high, you know, even though the game calls it high density. Just being careful with it, you can create a sense of medium, and we're now starting to see those layers develop, and will continue to develop over the next couple of episodes, at least as downtown Orchid Bay is constructed. Enormous thank you for all the love and support on this series. Every episode absolutely explodes. Uh, it's very overwhelming, super humbling. I'm, just, I'm so glad you guys are enjoying this vanilla series as much as I am. And there's still plenty, plenty more to do. Um, it's pretty likely we're going to be in Orchid Bay now until City Skylines 2, unless that is delayed. But uh, we'll be in Orchid Bay for a good while, so I'm glad you're all enjoying it as much as I am. Still loads more projects to take on. Please do enjoy your cinematics, but I'll shut up and leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.